currently up in Pennsylvania right now, and we are going to take a look at this type of water heater now. A lot of, I'm guessing maybe 75%, I'm just taking a guess at it, 75% of the people in the villages actually have this type of water heater. The other type is a tankless water heater, generally uh, put on the outside of the home. And so this won't really apply to that. But I will also have this, I will put this part in, add it to the filter video that I do once a year on all the filters. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up to it, but this will be added into it. Now, what we're gonna check, and let me tell you how this came about. I'm gonna show you the parts of the water heater so you understand what we're talking about. This isn't difficult, it's easy to do. You don't need to call a plumber for this probably. But at the same time, remember, I'm just a guy like the rest of you, so you probably shouldn't listen to what I'm saying anyway. These are the basic parts of the water heater. This is obviously the exhaust, and this is the expansion tank, and this is what we're going to talk about today. Then you have their basic tank, and this is a 75-gallon tank. And right in here, you have a relief valve. And the way this works is as your hot water heats up, it needs to expand. And to allow it to expand, there's a bladder in here filled with air. So half of this is filled with water and half of it's filled with air. And as it, the pressure changes, it allows it to compress and um, expand on that bladder. And when this is broken, and we'll show you, because this is a broken one, I'm going to replace this today. When this is broken and too much pressure builds up so that the actual tank doesn't explode, this allows water out and it usually comes down and you'll see some type of mark on your floor. So today, what I'm going to do is show you the basic check that you can do once a year, that you should do once a year, to see whether this is broken. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna show you the way this should look once I install the new one, but right now I'm gonna show you how I found out that this was defective. If you look down here in the relief area, this bucket has some water in it. And that is because this relief valve has been allowing water to come out. This tank right here is supposed to be filled air pressure. This is just like a regular Schrader valve on your bicycle. Is supposed to be an air bladder. But if you press on it, instead of air coming out, hopefully you can see this, well, I'm sure you could see it because of the water sprayed right out at the lens. There's actually water coming out of it. So that means this right here, the bladder has actually failed inside there. Let's take a step backwards here really, really quick. And I will kind of recap a little bit. When I was up at Gloria's house, she had said to me, hey, I got a little bit, my carpet's wet downstairs and I don't understand where it's coming from. Well, when I went down to look at it, right behind the wall was the hot water heater. So I went around and looked at the uh, pressure relief valve, right? And right down below the tube, there's a small drip of water. Now that shouldn't be wet down there at all, really. And if it is, there's a, two things that it probably could be. Now, remember, I am not a plumber. I'm just a guy that is down in the villages. But I thought this was kind of important since a lot of people, in fact, all over the country, have expansion tanks. And if you have this type of water heater, you probably should have an expansion tank on there because what this does is it allows the water to kind of fluctuate inside of your system by having a bladder in there that's pressurized to the same pressure as the water coming into your home or into your system. And that should be around, like I said, I'm not a plumber, but low end, uh, once you get below 40 is kind of low pressure generally people will consider. And you really don't want to be over 80 pounds per square inch. We're going to show you how to check that in a second. It's fairly easy and cheap, actually. But 
I realized that I had to replace her expansion tank. So I thought it'd be really fun just to show you guys really quick how you can check the pressure of your expansion tank, make sure it's at the correct pressure, and then actually inflate it yourself. And I will incorporate this into my yearly filters video, which I'll put a link up top, but it also comes out once a year right around my birthday. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to jump outside really quick and I will show you exactly what the um, pressure gauge looks like and how I took the pressure of the house. And then I'll come back in and I'll show you exactly how to read that pressure. And it is extremely easy. Now, so why do you need this thing? Well, when you overpressurize, right, when you get an overpressure, it can kind of mess things up around your house, you know, not, not necessarily exactly at that time, but as you overpressurize things, then you can kind of mess them up. So this kind of helps relieve that. And also a big thing is that um, relief valve that you have. There's a reason why there are not any threads at the bottom of it, because you do not want to cap, cap that. Because once that happens, then your hot water heater literally becomes an overpressurized bomb, so to speak, once your system's closed down because there's no way to get rid of pressure if that thing went, God forbid, went and overheated. So make sure you don't cap that or anything just because it's leaking. Anyway, let's jump outside really quick and I'll show you the gauge that I used. And I'll also put a link to a couple of different gauges down below that you can very cheaply get on Amazon. To actually fill the expansion tank, what you need to do is find out what the water pressure is coming into your house. Now you want to do that on the side where it's going to read the real water pressure. In other words, if you have a check valve where your water is reduced in pressure as it comes into your house, you want to make sure you're on the other side of that. But for most of us, without any type of valve in there, you just need to put on, and this isn't very expensive, I think this is about $19 for this water pressure gauge. It's made by Watts, I'll put a link to it down in the um, description. And you basically want to check the water pressure. Just turn on the water and check that out right here at 75. And let's go back in and I'll show you on the tank how you want to check that. That's step number one, and that is checking the water pressure coming into your house, which is a good idea to know that because especially with all the new building and that type of stuff, it can vary since it's not exactly the same place as when the house was originally built. So with that said, what you want to do is check that pressure because later on when we go to fill the tank, in other words, if we go check that tank, check the air pressure in the expansion tank and it is say 50 and your water pressure is in your house is 70, then they need to be equal. So that's what you need to do. This is an actual um, expansion tank. It's a four and a half gallon tank. And if forever you have to replace it, you want to make sure that you're replacing it with the same size. And this, all you need to do is these come pre-charged, but the problem is, is you need to make sure that it's charged to the same pressure as your water coming into your house, which we already checked. So this is just a regular bicycle gauge. And I'm going to just take this and show you here. And Hopefully you can see that it's pressurized from the factory at 43 and a half pounds. Now we need to bring that up to 75 pounds. As you can see, really easy to check the pressure. And what happens now if you check the pressure and the pressure is low? Say it's at 40, but we've gone outside and we check the house pressure is at 70. Well, you have to fill it back up, and that's what I'm going to show you next. When you fill it back up, put air into it, you need to relieve the pressure like before. Open up a couple of faucets around your house and bring it up to the pressure that your gauge said, say 70 PSI. 
And actually, this is really simple. And then you're pretty much done. But what you want to do is if you actually had a low reading, you want to make sure that the tank's not faulty and leaking. So you want to come back in a week or so. Oh, beeping something. You want to come back in a week or so and actually check it again and make sure it's up around where it should be at 70. And that really should hold out for the rest of the year. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video and then I'll come back for a second and hopefully put this one to bed. I'm using just a regular battery operated bicycle pump that will go up to 75 pounds. But the thing is, is if it's already mounted onto your house, you wanna make sure that you open up some faucets around the house to neutralize the pressure in your water system and then check the pressure, see whether it is at the same water pressure that we checked outside, 75 pounds for this house. If it's not and you need to put more air in, make sure that you have relieved the pressure, the water pressure, and then pump this up and then you're all ready to go. With this one, all I need to do is kind of set it and forget it and away we go. That's about it. It's actually not that involved, so I'll just recap it really quick. First thing you want to do is go outside and check the water pressure outside, making sure that you are checking it on the house side of the pressure, usually just some type of bib in and around the house will do because you don't want to check it if you have some type of regulator coming into the house. That should be somewhere between 40 and 80. Don't want to go over 80 because most of the fixtures and stuff in your house are rated up to 80 PSI. After you do that, Come back inside and you want to check the pressure on the expansion tank. When you go to do that, you can actually turn off the water uh, if you want going into the hot water heater and drain it. And then that way you'll get an accurate reading. But an easier way to do it, it'll get you close, is to open up a bunch of valves, hot water valves, not just cold water, hot water valves around the house, and then take the pressure. And that should be match the pressure that you took on the PSI of the water pressure just a few seconds ago. If you have to refill it, if it's low, make sure you leave those valves open or you have the water pressure turned off and fill that back up and check it again. Turn back on the water pressure and you're good to go until next year when you check it again. But like I said, if it's low, check it in a week or so just to make sure you don't have a leak in the bladder. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to either see you back in the villages. I'll see you back here on YouTube. Thanks a lot for subscribing and have a wonderful day.